And new at noon, we're getting brand new information about just how much the pandemic hurt kids in the classroom, and it's not good. News 3 reporter Penny Commit joins us now after reading the report. Penny, how did Virginia compare to other states? Well, Jen, unfortunately, not too well. According to Virginia State Superintendent Jillian Ballow, the state had the largest decline in reading test scores in the entire country. Only 32% of Virginia's fourth graders performed proficiently in reading compared to 43% in 2017. Now, this is a 12-point drop, and Ballow says that it's been foreshadowed for years and now should serve as a wake-up call. More than 20 years of gains have been completely wiped out. And this massive learning loss cannot be blamed solely on the pandemic because nearly half of the learning loss occurred before anyone in this room ever heard of COVID-19. Governor Yunkin then announcing this morning a seven-step plan to reverse this learning loss placing the most emphasis on raising SOL expectations. By this spring, when students take the exam again, Governor Yunkin is ordering the raising of the SOL cutoff scores from the lowest in the nation all the way up to the highest. Yunkin's plans also include offering $30 million in learning recovery grants so kids can meet with tutors and partnership with schoolhouse.world. But to accomplish this, the governor is asking for your help. He's asking that parents and community members volunteer to become tutors. Yunkin is also requiring schools spend their school recovery funds. Calling out Norfolk and Virginia Beach specifically, Yunkin says there is still $2 billion in recovery funds that schools across the state just haven't touched. Norfolk City Public Schools have $136 million left. Virginia Beach City Public Schools have $82 million left. The money is in the bank. It should be spent on things that will get our kids back on track for success. And, of course, the issue of teacher shortages continues to be discussed. Youngkin says he is giving $6 million to support teacher apprenticeship programs, $3 million for teacher recruitment and retention, and $1 million towards his Become a Teacher campaign. Now, in addition to the fourth graders, Virginia's eighth graders also performed below the average this year, with only 31% of them performing proficiently in math. That's compared to 40% when the test was last administered back in 2017. I'm Penny Commit, News 3. Thank you, Penny. And this afternoon, a teen shot in Newport News over the weekend has once again shaken residents living on the peninsula. Newport News police tell us officers responded to a shots fired call that came in Sunday afternoon around one at an apartment complex on Manor Road. That's just east of Warwick Boulevard. Once there, they found a male teen with multiple gunshot wounds. The victim was rushed to the hospital with what are believed to be life-threatening injuries. Parents in the area say their kids are living in a different world than the one they grew up in. One family told us that violence has escalated over the last few years. A little bit of a disregard for life has come in the last you know, handful of years. So it used to be that everybody cared about what happened to their neighbor or things like that. And I think they've kind of got distanced themselves from the, from the pain it causes. Currently, there's no suspect in custody, and this was the second shooting reported on the peninsula on Sunday. Hampton police are investigating a deadly shooting at a Taco Bell on Mercury Boulevard. A new this afternoon, we're learning that one of the victims of a double shooting in Norfolk has died. This happened right before noon Saturday on Duck Pond Road. Police say Dashnell Trapp was taken to the hospital where he later died from his injuries. A 31-year-old woman was also taken but is expected to recover. A person of interest has been arrested. If you have any information, you are asked to call police. And later today, the next meeting of the 531 Memorial Committee in Virginia Beach. And this one is open to the public. It's this afternoon from 4 to 6 at the Hive on Independence Boulevard. The committee wants to hear from you on the initial ideas for the design of a permanent memorial to the victims of the 2019 Virginia Beach mass shooting. They will review design concepts starting next month. And right now, dozens of local employers in Hampton Roads are looking to hire. The Hampton Roads Workforce Council is hosting its fall career fair tomorrow. More than 70 employers will be there, and it's happening at the Scope Arena from 10 to 3. The event is open to everyone, and it's free to attend. You can find registration information on our website and the News 3 app.
And if you find your pumpkin rots or dries out before you even get to trick or treat, science may have the workaround for you. In just about three minutes, how to make your pumpkin last longer. That's after the break on News 3 at noon. Welcome back. It's 1210 and it's pumpkin carving season, which means you may have put a lot of effort into creating that perfect jack-o'-lantern this year. Well, you can keep your pumpkin fresh until Halloween and maybe even later by using a little science. Listen to this from one Kentucky farm manager. When you do carve your pumpkins, um, it is like a wound. And so you have a couple different options. You can take petroleum jelly or olive oil and just rub it in those scarred places, those carved places, and all in the scooped out pumpkin. Way. You can also take a mixture of a quart of water along with a tablespoon of bleach, put it in a spray bottle, and spray the entire pumpkin, which kills all the bacteria, which helps with mold and rot. That is good to know. And one more tip, pumpkins don't like cold weather. So if the temperature drops below 50 degrees, try bringing them inside. And midterms are coming fast. Have you requested a mail-in ballot? The deadline to do so is coming up. And yep, here's April. She's coming in with today's weather trivia question. April. Yeah, now it's my turn to come up. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. You would think this movie would be released around Halloween, but it was actually released in July. Was it Hocus Pocus, Casper, or Nightmare Before Christmas? I'll have the answer and your seven-day forecast coming up. All right, let's go ahead and take a live look at the big board at the New York Stock Exchange. And you can see the Dow Jones Industrial Average is up today by more than a percentage point, about 384 points, hovering just over 31,000. And the Biden administration is not letting a legal loss keep it from moving ahead with that federal student debt forgiveness plan. Education Secretary Miguel Cardona says the administration will never stop fighting for the millions of hardworking students and borrowers across the country. The Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals halted implementation of the program while it considers the appeal from six states that filed a lawsuit to block the program. That lawsuit was previously dismissed by a federal judge. The ruling was handed down just a couple of days after the government started accepting applications to cancel as much as $20,000 in federal student loans. And record inflation will allow you to make larger contributions to your 401k and other retirement plans. The IRS says you can contribute $22,500 a year to your 401k, 403b, and most 457 plans. That's about a 10% increase that starts next year. If you're 50 and older and want to make what's called a catch-up contribution, that amount will increase as well. That amount grows from $6,500 to $7,500. And gas prices are slowly falling after showing signs prices may keep going up into the fall. AAA reports the average price for a gallon of unleaded gas is now about 3.80, and that's down about nine cents from a week ago. Oil prices have now fallen for 10 consecutive days. They're still about 10 cents higher than they were about a month ago and 42 cents higher than a year ago. Economists say the falling prices now could be the result of more fear about a recession, which usually does slow demand. And here's where we stand when it comes to what we're paying at the pump. You see it here on your screen. In the Commonwealth, prices are at $3.52 per gallon, down from last week, but higher than a month ago. Here in Hampton Roads, prices are $3.50 a gallon. In an effort to make schools safer, one local school district is handing out clear book bags. Starting today, Suffolk Public Schools will hand out clear backpacks in all of its middle and high schools. The district says it's ordered 5,000 bags and that it costs $50,000. The clear bags are not mandatory, though the district will reevaluate before the next school year. And the midterm elections are fast approaching with early voting already underway. And just as a reminder, the deadline to request a mail-in ballot here in Virginia is this Friday at 5 p.m. And a big race here in our area is the second district congressional race between Democrat Elaine Luria and Republican Jen Kiggins. And you can catch the candidates as they face off in their next debate. And News 3 is hosting it tomorrow night at 7. You can watch it right here on WTKR as well as on our sister station, that's WGNT, and on our website as well as with the News 3 app. 
And listen up, if you haven't had the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine yet, you or your insurance company may be picking up the tab in a few weeks. As government contracts wind down, Pfizer's vaccine will be sold for up to $130 per dose. That's the commercial list price, but the company believes most people will not actually have to pay that much out of pocket. An adult flu vaccine typically costs about $20 per dose, and vaccines can range in cost from $27 for a tetanus shot to up to $268 for the HPV immunization. Pfizer does point out it offers that patient assistance program, which helps provide the uninsured with access to vaccines. The shift away from government subsidized COVID vaccines is expected as early as the first quarter of next year. And cool and cloudy, that's how the day started, but change is on the way. Meteorologist April Leveland is here to let us know what the rest of this day will look like and the week too. April. Hey, Jen. Yeah, it's not looking too good out there today. Unfortunately, as we take a live look here over the Virginia Beach Ocean from basically what we've been seeing all day today, just socked in with that cloud cover a little on the wavy side, but I have been watching people kind of enjoying themselves getting out there and walking. Now, as we look at our weather headlines, I'm tracking those clouds sticking around today and tomorrow. It's going to take a little bit for these clouds to clear, especially along the coast. I'm also looking at a warming trend. We'll see those high temperatures back in the 70s tomorrow, and then we do have a few rain chances mainly this weekend very slight at this point keeping the chances in there though so if you do need uh, to kind of plan ahead just know that we do have those chances in there models though not in great agreement at this point first morning radar we have high pressure building in from our west but we still have that area of low pressure off of our coast that's what brought us all that nasty weather yesterday and it's going to be hanging out before it moves off to the north so that's why we are seeing all that cloud cover now it looks like we might see those clouds kind of thinning out a little bit close to 95 but for the most part i was looking at some of the observations there still looks like your guys are still socked in with clouds. Luckily though over the next five days our rain chances are going to be low about a 20% chance today tomorrow and Wednesday. So tomorrow we may see a stray shower but for the most part a lot of us are going to stay nice and dry and just dealing with a lot of cloud cover down to a 10% chance on Thursday and then 20% chance on Friday. Here's our future cast though. It is trying to clear out our clouds a little bit today, but I do think it's really going to be sticking around for the day today. If we do see any clearing, it's going to be short lived because those clouds are just going to be moving back in just in time for your Tuesday morning. We'll see them kind of coming.